Hi everyone, Vegas from Critic Jeffrey K. Howard here to review Steven Spielberg's Ready Player One, uh, starring, I'm going to get all these names here, Ty Sheridan, Olivia Cook, Ben Mendelsohn, Simon Pegg, T.J. Miller, and about every 80s pop culture reference you can think of. Uh, how do you like my Ready Player One shirt? I got this at Hot Topic, like, geez, like two or three weeks ago. Uh, is it too tight? I hope not. You know, I've been delaying this review. I saw this movie, like, today it opens today, and I was saw this a couple days ago, and I've been intimidated by sitting here and trying to figure out how to describe this movie, what I felt about this movie. I mean, this this movie was just everything in the kitchen sink, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying, wow, there was just, this movie is just, Steven Spielberg has his fingerprints all over this. Where to begin? So let's let's get into the future. It's 2045, and you have, uh, what's his name? Watts? Gosh, here we go. I already forgot. Wade Watts, and he lives in something called the Stacks, which is kind of like like the slums of the future. And we're not too sure about what the rest of the world is, if there's nicer parts of the world or there's nicer parts of town, or they really don't go into that much. But he lives uh, with his aunt and his uh, step, uh, her boyfriend who's like abusive. And everyone is miserable in the future. So what they do, reality bites. So what they do is they go into something called the Oasis, which is a gaming virtual reality. So you can create your own avatars, you can create your own your own situations, and it's insane. And it was it was developed by James Halliday, who was a, a famous uh, computer programmer. And when he passed away, he left control of his vast fortune and the control of the of the of the game itself to a lucky winner. He placed three keys within a game, a new part of this of the Omni. And uh, so these these kids end up finding these keys and going on this adventure. I mean, it's just so Spielberg, isn't it? And when I was watching the beginning of this, I'm like, wait a minute, this is Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. It's like, you know, Halliday is Willy Wonka. He wants to give up his factory. He can't do it forever. And he's going to put three keys, golden tickets. I was like, wow, this is like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory meets Tron. Now, for someone who's Generation X like me, this movie was such a trip down memory lane. I, I couldn't even keep track of all the pop culture references. Uh, you know, I was about 13 years old, 12, 13 years old, starting in the 1980s. I was junior high and high school, graduated in 84. Uh, and there's so many references to from Back to the Future, to movie things like King Kong, uh, to to video games and music. I mean, I was just I was just thinking of things I haven't thought of in 25, 30 years. And, and what I really liked about the movie is that it, it didn't take itself too seriously, but there were also moments of seriousness. Does that make sense? And Spielberg really just outdid himself again by shooting all the virtual stuff digitally and then shooting all the live action stuff on film. So you see this great contrast that goes back and forth. And the great score for Alan Silvestri, who did Back to the Future. I can't believe John Williams didn't score this, but Silvestri seems like the better choice because he did Back to the Future and he's got that kind of that 80s kind of pop thing going and it really complemented the movie. Now, of course, the villain in the film is Ben Mendelsohn, who I thought was kind of weak. You know, I thought we should have a stronger actor to play that. I don't know, just something about it. It just didn't click with me. But also, great the great Simon Pegg, you know, he's a, the partner of Halliday. And also, uh, T.J. Miller plays one of the virtual characters that's in the, in, in the movie. And uh, so there's some great voice actors going on in there. Uh, I just can't... I, I need to see this movie, like, two or three times. It demands a, a, more than one screening because there's so much going by. There's so much happening. And when you see just the vast... Uh, this movie's an epic by by all definitions. It's an epic, and Spielberg's got his signature, uh, not only signature moves and his style going on in the film, but also his classic themes. You know, of you know kids against the world. Uh, also, you know the the underdog. You know, trying to to. Uh, conquer the odds. So there's all these Spielberg themes that have been all of his films and most of his films that are in Ready Player One. So some of my favorite pop references, and this is a spoiler-free review. I mean, I can't even sit here and tell you everything that happened here. It's almost impossible to spoil this film. One of my favorites is the Iron Giant. He was uh, featured in the film. Uh, also King Kong. He's tearing up this like uh, whole subway kind of thing going on, the L train. And also there's a sequence that's dedicated to The Shining that just has to be seen to believe. And if you haven't seen The Shining yet, you've got to watch it first before you see Ready Player One because it's a major sequence in the movie. And if you're a Shining fan, if you're a Kubrick fan, I, mean, I was just blown away by that. I mean, I sit here thinking about it. It's one of those movies where, especially with a Spielberg film, like when I was younger, when you start talking about it, you want to go see it again. You want to call up your friends and go, come on, we got to go see this movie more than once. 
So Ty Sheridan and Olivia Cook, they make a great couple. Uh, they they play off each other really well. Uh, Ty, I thought he was vulnerable. I mean, he he was this kid that was trying to change the world, and I just love how he had an abusive background, but of course he rose above the odds. And the high five is a little group of gamers that go inside the Omni and just try to solve these three key puzzle. I mean, each character, not only do you see in the virtual world, but you finally get to meet them, what they really look like, and there's some great surprises with that. So Ready Player One is just... It's mind-blowing, and I sit here and I'm thinking, you know, exactly how in the world did they do this? You know, there's some action sequences in there I've never seen before, and there's, there's some great little Easter eggs all over the movie. Like, there's a picture of Will Wheaton on a poster in the back, you know, from Star Trek The Next Generation. There were so many things going by, I didn't have a pen, I wanted to write down everything that was happening, but things were moving so fast, things were moving at a, such a, a warp speed that it just, I don't understand how I, I came away with even understanding anything of it. So Ready Player One, definitely what Spielberg was made to do. Uh, I have not read the book, you know, and I'm dying to know what people think about who've read the book, who've seen the movie. You know, I think I'm going to read the book now because that just, uh, but they say, you know, the book isn't the movie, so, you know, but it shouldn't matter because there are so many great pop culture references in this, and especially at the end of the movie, they're playing a movie called Adventure, and I'm not giving any spoilers away, and I just, that really took me back because I was 13 years old when Adventure came out. I was the kid playing the Atari. I found that Easter egg. I found the, the name of the guy who designed the game. It's the most generic, ridiculous game when you see it now. Little squares moving through a maze. But back in 1980, I was like, that was the biggest thing in the world to me. I loved adventure. And that's what Ready Player One is. It's adventure on an epic scale. Highly recommend it. I had a great time. If you're a Spielberg fan like I am, you're going to go back into this movie two or three times. I saw it in the Dolby Aos, you know, that, that special uh, theater they have for AMC. I didn't see it in 3D, which I really don't want to because I think I would have gotten sick or a real bad headache, but I prefer not the 3D. So you can go see that. I want to see it in IMAX, so I think that would be a, an amazing experience. So go see Ready Player One. All right, for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. Uh, also, check out me on the, check me out <laughs> on social media: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Also, check out my podcast over there on iTunes. And if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below. What did you think of Ready Player One? If enough people comment below, I have a great Iron Giant story when I met Brad Bird. So if you want to hear that, comment below and say, Jeff, tell us the Brad Bird story and I'll do another video for that. Uh, I was trying to think if I was going to do a spoiler review for this, but I don't think so because it's got to be it's got to be experienced. So go see it. I already said that. Goodbye. I'm Jeffrey Goward in Las Vegas. I'll see you next time.